let's go. Okay, so it's the next morning for us. It's been about 10 seconds for you, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. So everything is drained out. We left it overnight. You don't really need to leave it overnight. I know that, you know, a couple hours is probably plenty to, to make sure everything's drained out. I like it overnight because everything's dry, everything's cleaned out there and stuff. So, um, you know, we still have the old filter in and things like that. So, you know, what's, here's the question. Do we take this all apart and, you know, close this off and close this up now? Or do we wait and change the uh, filter and all that and then take this off? I don't know, you guys tell me. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart though. So we're gonna close this. I'm gonna keep this panel open, but I am gonna put our small panel back on there. So I'm gonna close that up, keep this panel open. The reason I keep this panel open is once we uh, go out and do the run up, I wanna be able to see in here and make sure there's no leaks. I also took the panel, this panel off of the other side. On this plane, remember this is a turbocharged, the TC. So I got the whole turbo assembly and stuff in there. So. I also wanted, after the run-up, be able to see in that side and look around the turbo assembly. There's some check valves and stuff in there on both sides of the turbo and things that I want to take a peek at. So on this particular TC, I take the panels off both sides before the run-up. To take this off, it's real simple. I'm just going to counterclockwise the fitting that's going to seal up. And then I'm going to drop the hose off and take everything out of here. So here we go. Counterclockwise, drop the hose down. And it's actually nice and clean. So that's why I like doing that and waiting overnight and it's not down in the, uh, in the oil and stuff. So we're good there. That's it for this side. We'll just get the panel in. Okay, so that's that. Now, somebody in the hangar here said talk about my little cart. So this is my little detailing cart that I roll around. I love it. It's just a little cheap kitchen cart that we get from Amazon Home Depot. I hang all the bottles right on the side here and uh, got a couple of wine bottle boxes that are inside here. And this is kind of a, a fun little cart that just kind of goes with me from plane to plane. So uh, compact, small, like it. So somebody said to show it to you, so we did. Okay, let's head over to the other side. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get into changing the oil filter out. And if you remember, what we're trying to do in this video is for you guys to tell us the mistakes we're making, number one and just give us better ideas and remember the winners are going to be getting a papiero pro kit and some free memberships so go ahead and comment down below but i was going to leave a mistake i made yesterday and i wanted to go ahead and show it because i think it's important so here on the safety wire you can see that uh, we have the safety wire we cut yesterday and we kind of left it hanging there now some people cut it right around the fitting here where you can just kind of pull it off um, but here's the problem and I've seen it happen. Ask me how I know this happened, somebody else, not me. Um, if you leave it just kind of hanging there like that is, and you go to pull the filter off, and that falls down inside the engine, that's right up there and probably one of the top 10 things that's not good for an aircraft engine. So you, what you wanna do is you wanna cut that wire either down a couple inches and leave that whole safety wire on there so when you pull it out, that's not gonna come off. Or if if you like to cut it right there and get that off there, then go ahead and cut it, but pull this off before you, you pull the filter out. So just wanted to mention that, and we're gonna just pull that whole thing right off there. So I got it off there, so it's not on there, so you guys don't have to call me out on that one. So that's done. Now the next step is, is I'm gonna put towels down around here. And the reason is, is like I said, you can see the whole turbo assembly and things here. There is no rim in here. Like it's hard to get towels down underneath there. Where, so when I lift that filter off, it doesn't get all over because it's just so hard to clean inside here because there's no room. So I'm gonna show you kind of what I do to uh, get a towel under there and get this ready to pull that filter off. So what I'm doing is I've got the towel on the safety wire. I'm putting the safety wire around the filter. And all I have to do is kind of go around here, slide it down or over the top. Really simple. So it puts that down there. Safety wire goes down. And then I push the safety wire all the way to the bottom of the filter and then pull the towel through. Great, so got the towel down there. I'm gonna push it down with the screwdriver. Okay, so I just got the towel down around the outside of the filter. Again, I can't get my hands down there, so I just use that safety wire, pull it around, and now I'm just gonna 
get some towels in here because I'm going to pull it right over the top here and that's it you can see from the engine here that I'm a little bit of a clean freak so I like to have that done so I'm going to go ahead and pull this off and then I'm going to pull it up and over but before I do that I'm going to put some blue tape on these holes so I'm filling the holes from yesterday up here because I'm going to come straight up and turn it over the worst part let's get going so I'm just going to use my torque wrench to get this get this off here I'm sure you guys are going to yell at me for that but that's what I have here okay so that's nice and loose don't like that pull this filter right up turn it over and not a drop pretty clean in there right nice so I'm going to take this towel just dab around here a little bit and then I'm going to leave it right here on this hole so nothing can go down in there I'm going to leave that there and then I'm going to go put this on the bucket and talk about this little stand we got over here okay so love this little tray here so this tray has a place to put the oil filter put that on there I take these off so it'll drain and um, it just kind of drains out it'll sit here while I put the new filter in and get it ready for me to cut it open so um, I got my gloves cutter so we'll cut the, that open in a minute and then also what I do is I put this really simple cheap magnifying glass on there when we're done and I'm going to check the filter inside it and we'll uh, give it a check of stuff I don't have a magnet here or something if I see something or we see anything then um, we'll go ahead and do that I will tell you but for this this plane and how we operate uh, works great so we just got a new report back on our oil sample um, and if anybody wants the actual PDF of all of our borescope pictures and give us any thoughts put a comment below or email us at support at e3association.com and I'll email the full report to you guys and you can tell me what you think and you're seeing how we're how we're doing our stuff here so I'm gonna leave this here and you know based on the fact that we left this sit overnight there's really not anything coming out of it maybe a drop or two which is why that's a, a great process for the overnight so let's head back up and get the new filter on okay so now I'm gonna cut the old safety wire off if you notice here that I still have a uh, shop towel in the oil filter hole um, gonna get that out it's gonna be hard for you to see because I got to get in there it's tight and then we'll get the other safety wire on so let's get down in there cut this make sure I have the whole piece it's all there now we get the new safety wire put in here which is always an interesting part because you cannot see in these TC's just got to feel the way in there okay so it's through there grab my pliers All right, so I got the safety wire through there. And again, in the TC, it's really hard to see in there. So you kind of just got to feel, feel my way to get that in there. So we got the wire in there. And again, as you can see, I still have the towel in here. So I leave that there. Now I know where the filter comes up to. And I'm hoping you guys are going to school me on this. Tell me where and what I'm doing wrong. So my filter comes right about here. So let's get this on there. Okay, and give it one, two, three. All right. So I got that prepared. So I got that there ready to go you can see what I did there all right and I know there's a whole bunch of comments coming in already <laughs> so we're gonna get our filter in here now but before I do that I'm just gonna make sure everything's out of here that's clear and then I just want to take a peek double check everything looks good nothing in the way that's all nice and clean Oil looks good, so we're going to go ahead and put the filter on there now. I did put a little bit of the oil from here on here. I know that 
either grease or oil. There's certain types of grease they tell you to put on all that. I have never had one of these stick on me. So I've just been using the oil like you see there, put it on there, and then I go down on that. So this is going to go on about 16 pounds. It was I prepped the filter. I already brought the tabs up for the safety wire. So everything's clean. Everything looks good, ready to go. And we'll talk about these lines on the top here. All right, so I'm screwing this down. Now I'm hand tightening. So I'm taught hand tighten and then a quarter turn. So we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna hand tighten, we're gonna quarter turn this, and then we're gonna put the torque wrench on it at 16 pounds. It says 16 to 18, but we're gonna just put it on 16. So for now, the lines want to help me with the turn, but it's more also to talk about what's coming up next. So I got that hand tight and we're going to go quarter turn. Okay, so there's our quarter turn. All right, everybody. So here's the big test. We're now going to put the torque wrench on it. We're at 16 pounds in the torque wrench. So we went hand tight quarter turn and it's actually, it's, you know, that's pretty tight, but let's see where we end up here. That's another quarter turn. Another quarter turn. All right, so that's 16 pounds. We want hand tight and a full turn. So hand, hand tight, quarter turn, not enough. Hand tight, half turn, I heard that too, not enough. To get to 16, we had hand tight and then a full revolution is at 16 pounds. Love to hear thoughts from you guys on that. And um, yeah, so I do torque wrench it now. So let's go on to the next part. We're gonna go ahead and get our safety wire on here. And we're looking pretty good. I think I want a little bit more twist on there. Actually, I'm gonna cut this off here. Make it a little easier to deal with because I know you guys already got about 10 comments on me. My amateur safety wire skills. Okay, how'd you go on there? You thought I was going to put it on this side, didn't you? <laughs> no. So, all right, we're good. We're going to get it on this side. I'm going to push that through there. Okay, so now I got it through the tab. Okay, so now two, three. All right, so safety wires on there pretty good. You're supposed to have a one inch twisted tail. So we wanna come out about an inch and then twist it back. Okay, so that's pretty tight in there. That's pretty good. How's that look, guys? Everybody like that? Tell me what I did wrong on that. If anything, you know, maybe I did it right. So 16 pounds, got our wire tie or safety wire on there. Everything looks good. I'm just gonna double check, make sure I didn't leave anything in here, drop anything. I'll give a little more light so you guys can see that wire tie there. I got the one inch tail on it. Everything looks good. All right, good. So now we're going to change over to getting us filled in here. And uh, then we'll do our run up and check things out. So let's uh, get ready, set up for doing that. All right, cool. So we're going to go ahead and now fill us back up. Everything's all taken care of. We know that the truck's closed down there, filters in, everything's tidied up. Um, again, I put this door off because remember, I have a turbocharger here so when I do the run-up I want to be able to see inside and see these check valves so we're going to talk about I'm putting cam guard in here and I'm putting Phillips 66 I know some people like to put the aero shell but I do want to talk about this a little bit um, why cam guard or the difference in aero shell 100 or aero shell plus this goes in the extra we don't use this here but we use w100 plus in the extra so we'll keep that over there but this is what we're putting in this plane so Cam guard, let's talk about this a little bit because I know it's a big 
controversial conversation and stuff and I do it I think it can't hurt I'll talk about why um, I'm not a scientist I'm not an engineer it's just what I've learned over the years having you know changed the oil and 10 our aircraft you know just think about how I kind of look at it is if you think about what happens in this engine so when the engine's running acids form just from combustion gases and just the oil degrading it's just part of the process the gases enter the crankcase by blowing through the pistons and unavoidably oxidation process happens by that hot oil just interacting with the air so that's not the big issue the issue is when water gets introduced into that equation and that with the acids creates like nitric acids and acids and between that and the water is what creates all the corrosion and things in the engine what is the best way to deal with that i mean obviously these are additives and stuff but the best way is fly the plane i mean you just have to fly it and they suggest about 30 minutes of flight cruise flight power every two weeks 30 minutes cruise flight power every two weeks that's really the best way because the heating up of that oil eradicates the acids and gets rid of the moisture that's inside there that's the best way but if you can't fly a lot you know you have these additives but take it a step further nowadays a lot of these oils like the aero shells and you know the victory and all that kind of stuff they already have the anti-scuffing and corrosion inhibitors right in the oil. So if you look at the service bolt, and I think it's a service bolt in 446 Echo and might be 4, 471 Bravo, I think the Lycoming service bolt, and that'll kind of explain it a little bit. So it's already kind of mandated that it's in uh, these oils. So you're probably saying, okay, genius, well, if it's already in the oils, why am I putting CamGuard in there? Well, you guys tell me. Nobody told me it hurts, and my logic thinks that you know it can only help we do fly the plane quite a bit, but you know, occasionally this plane has sat for a month. So these additives help for people that don't fly the plane every two weeks or if it sits around for a couple of months. And what it does is it creates a coating inside the engine for a couple of reasons. One, for anti-corrosion. But more importantly is the anti-scuffing material, it stays inside the metal area so that when you go to start up again, all the oil is not up inside the engine. It's all down in the pan. So when you start up, you've got all that, you know, no oil up in there. So that gives it a little extra protection until the oil gets pumping up through the engine and stuff. So that's the anti-scuffing. It kind of coats the inside. The other thing that these oils are good at now, especially these types, is they flow better when the oil's cold or when there's no oil in there. It gets up into the engine a lot faster than like the, the monos. So um, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll start putting the oil in and uh, we'll get right back to you. So let's do this. All right, so first thing, uh, I'm going to put the cam guard in first. A couple things. The other thing about cam guard, remember, do not put these in a new engines. If you're breaking in an engine or something, I think they say something like, you know, at least 10 hours, there should be no cam guard in there. I think it's 10 hours, so check that. But So you don't want cam guard in there. I'm putting this in first. Now, the other thing is, is I make sure that I'm going to run the plane up today if I'm putting cam guard in it. Because um, you don't want this just to be sitting down in the bottom like for a long time overnight. Don't just change the oil and then leave the plane for days. You don't want to do that. You want the cam guard in there. You want to get the oil in, run the plane up. As soon as you're done, of course, you want to do leak checks anyway. So um, just don't let this cam guard sit in there down the bottom by itself. Um, so let's finish filling this up. Yeah, I'm not using the funnel. I know I should be, but we're not. And then uh, when we get this done, we're going to go out and run up. But um, before I run up, we're going to go ahead and open up the filter here. Check that filter for any sediments or any metal. So I'm putting nine plus cam guard in. And then I'll check it. I know there's some rule of thumb and some stuff people talk about to, you know, put the nine in. Go out, run it up, let it get up into the engine, get it into your oil filter, all that, and then come check it. Maybe put another one on, another one in. Okay, a couple more. We're going to get in there. And, of course, as I'm putting it in, I'm taking a peek, making sure there's no leaks coming out down bottom and things. That's uh, what I'm doing. One of the other reasons why, maybe sometimes it's better to keep all that hooked up down there until you're done and then pull it off. But uh, I pulled it off because I like to, as I'm filling, I just want to check as I'm filling here to see if there's any any leaks going on. So I said, why do I love this little case here? Well, it's got a place for the oil filter to sit. Because I let it go overnight, there's really nothing. I mean, there's a drop. That's it, that's all that's there. So 
But if you're doing it and you want to get this done in the day, you just drop this here and the oil stays in the pan here. Um, but literally, that's all that's here because we let that go overnight and it was punched. So um, that's there. We're going to go ahead and cut this open and check that filter. Remember, I hope you guys are all telling me what I'm doing wrong or better ideas here. So no oil here, no leaking. Perfect. Probably need to let it sit for a few minutes, but anyway, we'll give it a quick check. Looking good. I already checked underneath while I was filling these and no oil, double checked everything. Already went through all this. <clears throat> so let's head over here. All right, so now we're gonna cut this filter open. Now I will tell you that usually I put this in the vise on the workbench and do it that way, but Today, I'm just doing it by hand. Let's see how it goes. I've been liking this one. Joe's Racing Products. I've been through quite a few of these. This one just seems to be pretty universal, works well. There we go. Awesome. Nothing there. Pull this out. I see nothing in here, so there's like no big metals or anything like that. So we're good there. So now I'm going to cut this open. As you guys have all seen this a million times, so I just kind of saw through it once and then I come back through it. So I'm going to pull that out, but um, what I do is I get this cheap. There is a light in it if you want to put the batteries in it, but I just start to really take a look at it under the magnifying glass. So tell me what you guys do on this. Um, I know some people use a magnet. I don't see any metal. Uh, maybe a tiny, tiny little piece right there. This is clean as a whistle. Um, looks really good, really clean. That's it. So filter looks good. Gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I'm gonna check here, make sure we got nothing going on. Keep the panels off. Gonna go out and do a run up and uh, we'll close this out and show you a couple other things. Got a little quick couple things I wanna talk to you about and uh, another little secret that we're gonna let you know about. So let's go ahead and get the plan out of here and uh, wrap this up. Close this up here. I already checked it. Good to go, oil caps on tight and easy. Looks good. Good there, good there. Temp's coming up. Okay, oil temp is in the green. So we're gonna come up 1700. Oil pressure is great. Do a prop cycle. Let the temps come up a little bit more. Full idle. Still running nice and smooth. Oil temps came down a little into the yellow, so that's good. It's doing its job. Back up to a thousand. Oil temp screen, oil pressure is great. Great, everything looks good on the panel. So AC off, avionics off, and we're gonna come to full cutoff. Good here, let's go out and check it. Temps all look good, pressures look great. Now, we still got the panels off here. The flashlight out. Looking good there. I don't see any oil on this side. So remember, we're getting ready to wrap up, but hopefully you guys saw a bunch of mistakes that you'll give us some guidance on. More importantly, as a community, coming together a community, love to hear from all the experienced people, what would you have done differently? What are some good ideas that we can share with everybody? Everything looks perfect. No oil around the filter. 
check all the turbo assembly. So the reason I keep the panel off on this side, because it's a TC. So we get the turbo in here. And after a run up, I like to check these check valves. Because as you know, we've got oil running to those. And that all looks good. Now I do know you got two check valves on each side of these turbos. And we think one of them might be leaking just a bit. Occasionally we'll see a little bit of oil coming down out of here. It's not coming from any of the breathers or anything. It's definitely coming from around those check valves. Two ways to fix that. And we're going to talk to Bill at Beechcraft or Atlantic Beechcraft and have him fix that. Two ways is one is you can take that check valve apart. And usually there's the uh, O-ring usually gets bad. You can replace the O-ring and you're good. Or depending on the type, you might have to replace the whole check valve. So either a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks. That's how it is. So we'll know that soon. We're going to have him take a look at that. But so far, everything is looking great. And uh, we're going to wrap up. So again, make comments down below. The best comments are going to be getting that box with that Papiero Pro Kit. And then other comments, we're going to be getting free lifetime memberships, like $4,000 memberships, a couple of free lifetime memberships to E3 Aviation. Um, and also shout out to Banyan. It's where we get all our oil, by the way. All our oil and products we get at a Banyan Pilot Shop because as an E3 Aviation member, we get a pretty good discount that I'm not allowed to put out publicly, but um, just that one oil change would pay for an E3 membership for a year or two. So um, I get all my stuff from Banyan Pilot Shop and they help us out with all of our hangar space and stuff too. So other than that, we really look forward to you. I please, everybody, please go ahead and make a comment. Tell us what we could do better. Let's share it with the community. And if we get enough, we might even do a whole separate video about all the different ideas you guys have. We'll go ahead and do a video and put it to an application here. So thanks for joining us. Please like and subscribe and share this if you could. And uh, we will see you on the next video. So take care, everybody.